your three responsibilities as a first time home buyer coming right up. Number one, make sure that you get your paperwork in order. If you've ever seen the commercials out there with that uh, company that rhymes with docket mortgage, you know who I'm talking about, right? <laughs> You'll know that when they say push button, get a mortgage, that that isn't really anything but a data grab for them. All they're trying to do is get your information so that they can get you into their system and they can start marketing to you to get a home loan. Because if you fill out an application, they must assume that you're interested slightly in buying a home and getting a loan. That's how they do it. That's all it is. In reality, you're borrowing hundreds of thousands of dollars. So think about that for a second. If I'm lending my friend $100, I'm gonna to wanna to know where that money's going. The bank is exactly the same way. So when we lend hundreds of thousands of dollars out, it's not meant to be easy. There's gonna be things that you have to go through in order to be able to get qualified to get a mortgage. Things like getting your paperwork in order, that's the most important thing to start out. Some of the very basic things that you're gonna need that I see for most home buyers uh, is to get a copy of your asset statements, uh, which means bank statements that shows where your cash to close is coming from. And cash to close is defined as the down payment plus any closing costs that you're going to need to be able to close on that particular property. So asset statements, you're going to need verification of your income. So things like your two most recent pay stubs typically, and then things like your W-2s to make sure that you have continuity in your job or the function that you do. There's all sorts of different types of borrowers out there. So these are just a couple of things that you may need and they can go much deeper in terms of documentation from there on out, but that's okay. We'll get to that at some point and you'll know what you need when you finally get there. The second thing you wanna do is to make sure that you respond to communication. The most important things about business, it's common practice, is just to acknowledge receipt of the information that somebody is providing for you. So if, for example, a loan officer reaches out and asks for your uh, W-2s, make sure you let them know that you know that you're looking for their W-2s. Oh, hey, I got your message. Really appreciate that. I'll get back to those, get those to you as soon as I possibly can. Sometimes they're hard to find, <laughs> right? We just want to make sure that we're in constant communication throughout the process in order for you to be able to buy your first home. And number three is to listen to advice. My team has done thousands of pre-approvals. We know what it is, what we're looking for. When we're gonna do a mortgage pre-approval. We want all of the information to be provided as soon as possible. And that helps us get us staying in rhythm and we can get your loan pre-approved as soon as possible when we do that. As your mortgage planner, we'll dive deep into questions and we'll figure out not just what's on the loan application. We don't wanna be just a transaction taker. We're gonna figure out what is gonna be the things that's gonna happen for you after you get a mortgage. We wanna fit this mortgage into your short-term and long-term financial goals so that they fit well into your overall financial plan. We'll shoot for a maximum amount of money to qualify you for. And then we wanna work backwards to make sure that it fits within your budget and what you are actually looking for. Just because you qualify for a certain amount of mortgage money doesn't always mean that that's what you wanna spend in order to buy your first house, most likely, okay? And then a bonus tip, we'll call this 3A. We're gonna say, don't chase the unicorn because it doesn't exist. And what do I mean by that? I simply mean that if you find a property that meets most of your wants and needs, it's probably gonna be the right property for you. If you're looking for that, that property that is the unicorn, the one that meets every single want or need on your list, that dots all the I's, crosses all the T's, chances are it's gonna meet somebody else's unicorn status as well. And you're gonna be competing that for that property with a lot of other buyers. And you're gonna probably have to pay more than just what you wanna pay for it in order to fit with inside your budget. Thanks so much for joining me. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I look forward to chatting with you really soon.